So as always, we need to start out with our globals dot sprite batch dot begin and I'm going to add those parameters here this time I'm uh, going to use uh, sprite sort mode immediate uh, blend state will be alpha blend Sorry, I gotta adjust my monitor here a little uh, sampler state is going to be point clamp and um, let's see, depth stencil state dot default rasterization oops. rasterized state uh, it's going to be cold none and I think that's it so whoops cold none and then I'm going to end my sprite batch as a general rule here. Okay. And this is where we will actually be doing our tile drawing. So I'm going to start by doing a draw tile layer. Um, let's do four. do this uh, for draw X is negative 1 to 16 and if you're wondering why we're doing negative 1 um, I like to I like to actually render a tile off the side of the screen so when we end up scrolling through our tiles uh, when we do character movement uh, it doesn't flash as the you know, if we move to the left, it start. You know, it'll start drawing a tile, uh, rendering it off the screen, so it shows up on the screen instead of uh, clipping off that tile and creating sort of a weird flashing effect. It's kind of hard to explain, but uh, we may uh, may go through that later on here, just so we can understand it better uh, when we get into character movement and things like that. But for now, uh, we're just going to leave it like that. Render it off the screen then draw to the 16th place on the right. So it's going to start at negative 1, draw uh, 0 up to 16, which I guess is a total of 18 tiles uh, on the x coordinate, uh, x axis. And then we'll have to draw our y. So we'll do draw y equals negative 1 to 15. So Again, drawing what 17 tiles there, uh, counting negative one and zero, up to 15 tiles to the right or downward. Uh, now we're going to do some offset values here. I'm going to do a dim x as integer, and offsets will be used to uh, draw smoothly uh, when we begin moving and things like that. So. Let's see, I'm going to do this as draw x plus map x. This is going to actually set a coordinate. Um, sorry, this is not our offset. This is our map coordinate, our current map coordinates um, that will link our screen value to our map value. Um, so this will be the tile value on the map and it has to begin drawing at that position so we're going to use this to tell it where to begin drawing what part of the world because you don't always want to start drawing your world at the very first tile on your world um, map so I mean what if you want to start at a city or a castle that you know is way out in the middle of the world this is how you tell it to start drawing at that position so hope that makes sense so this will be draw y plus map y. <clears throat> okay, now to prevent uh, prevent us from drawing outside of the bounds of our arrays and things, um, we don't want it to try to render tiles that don't exist or are outside of that those boundaries. So we're going to say if 
x is greater than 0 and x is less than or equal to our map width. Oops. Map width. And y is greater than or equal to 0. And y is less than or equal to the map height. Then go ahead and, and draw. Otherwise, ignore our drawing routine. Um, that should prevent us from crashing if we go outside of our array bounds and things like that. I uh, ran into that in my old GDI series. Still get questions today about uh, why, why it uh, crashes when you try to move off your screen because it tries drawing parts of the world that don't exist so, and exist outside of the array. Um, so this is where we're actually going to do our drawing um, of each tile. So we're going to start out by uh, calling our globals dot sprite batch dot draw. Oops. And first thing it asks us is, what do we want to draw? Well, uh, because we told our tile structure to store uh, the tile graphics, we're going to do we're going to call map our map array and our tile list at the x-coordinate and y-coordinate and then we're going to grab the property tile graphics from there and that will be the, the texture 2D that we are drawing so from our map base um, let's see was it our map base oh from our tile <laughs> okay let me let me uh, restate that here okay we're, we're calling our map. Our map is uh, has a tile list, a list of all the tiles in our world at the x and y coordinate. Oops, I didn't mean to move that. And we want to grab the specific tile at this coordinate and grab the uh, tile graphics property from there. And that tile graphics property is going to come from our texture 2Ds. Uh, it will be linked to our textures which will be our world texture. So you can kind of see how that's flowing down through the, through the code there. Um, so next we need a destination rectangle. Where do we want to draw this on the screen? Um, I'm going to say we want to draw a new rectangle. And we will be drawing at the coordinates draw x times our tile size. So we'll say draw x times our tile size which we determined was 32 by 32 earlier on. Uh, so that will be draw x times 32 then it will move over to the next 32 pixels draw another tile and then keep going. Same with our y position so we'll do draw x y times 32 which <laughs> sorry I want to use our tile size keep it dynamic. Um, and how big of a tile do we want to draw? Well, we want to draw our tile size. Just 32 by 32. Okay, so that will be the destination that we draw it on our screen. So next up, um, color Actually, what we want here is uh, the source coordinates of our graphic. So, uh, do you, if, hopefully, you remember defining our uh, source rectangle. So, that's the property that we're going to be pulling from our structure here as defined in our map base. So, uh, what we will do is call on our map class and the tile list again at the current coordinates x and y and we want to grab what property from that tile that exists at those coordinates we want to grab the source rectangle okay and do we want any tinting on our tiles I think not we're just gonna call color dot white 
so there's no uh, color changes there. And that's really all there is to it. And that should go out, grab the tile source, uh, the image, tell it where to draw on our screen, and what the source rectangle is for that tile graphic. Um, optionally, uh, this is something we you may want to use. This is great for uh, uh, determining where you are on your map. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just throw in this optional bit of code here. Let's say view uh, coordinates. If I can type that there on tile. So what this will do is uh, draw a value of the position on your map. Great for uh, manually placing things like where on my map do I want to put this object or something uh, or did I put it in the right place or you know. So I'm just going to say globals dot sprite batch uh, dot draw string and I want to call upon my fonts globals and I'm going to use the small font uh, Arial 8 here. <clears throat> now what do I want to draw here? I'm just going to draw X and uh, um, the X coordinate value and I'm going to use a VBCRLF here to drop down a line. Then I'm going to draw Y and my Y value. So I can just actually see what the coordinates are drawn on the tile there. Um, where do we want to draw this? I'm going to say a new vector 2 position. mirror our tile, so say tile, uh, draw x times tile size, draw y times tile size. And the color, I'm going to go ahead and draw that in black. Let's see if I got all that right. Accident put tile instead of tile size there. And I'm going to comment this out for now. Uh, we'll test that later on. So, I'm uh, going to save my work. Um, now, to actually get our world screen to load, we have to um, tell our screen manager to load it at a certain time. And the time that I think would be best to load it is after we uh, select new game from our main menu. So that's what we will do next off here. So let's go ahead and go over to our solution explorer and open our menus folder in our screens and open up the main menu. So here you can see that when we created our main menu we gave it the name main menu. Uh, one thing that will be very important as we invoke this new screen is to unload the main menu so the screens don't load over top of each other. Um, let's go down to our <clears throat> in our uh, handle input sub and before what we had is we'd press our um, you know if we pressed enter on the first option which was new game. So we added an entry called new game to our menu and uh, we press enter and it invokes this little message box. Let's go ahead and just uh, do that. So you, we can cycle through our menu, hit that and that message box pops up. But what we want to do instead of popping up a message box is uh, unload this title screen and load our game screen. So to do that we are going to just get rid of this little bit of code here and we'll say screen manager dot unload screen and we will call the screen name title screen <clears throat> so it should fire this sub right here 
um, passing this, the name as a string into our screen list and unload it from there. Uh, next up, we want to say screen manager dot unload screen main menu. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we've unloaded our title screen, but if you recall, our title screen actually consists of two screens uh, running at the same time. So we want to dump both of those screens. We want to dump this menu and our title screen. And then finally we want to load our game screen, which is going to be our world. So we'll say screen manager dot add screen. At this time we'll say new world screen. All right, that's not too hard. 